the leaders here. My name is Ken Balcom. I'm the senior scientist at the Center for Whale Research in Friday Harbor, Washington, San Juan Island. And uh, I went to college in the late 50s, early 1960s, University of California. And at the t I majored in zoology, ultimately. And at the time, uh, people were going to Africa and doing these spectacular studies on lions and elephants and chimpanzees and gorillas with individual recognition. They could tell individuals apart from photographs. It was like, that was fascinating as a thing to do. What else you can do with your life? You know, why, be outside, study stuff? <laughs> cool. So I got fascinated with whales, and the first thing I did was I started washing dishes on a whale catcher boat and went out to sea and took pictures of stuff. And I took pictures of a dolphin that was very unusually pigmented. And it turned out that a colleague of mine, Bob Brownell, had photographed the same dolphin about two years earlier. And we matched up the pictures, and we, and this is like 1963, and we were, uh, you know, going to publish. You know, we, we discovered something. We can tell them apart. Well, uh, time went on. I uh, uh, got interrupted for a little while during the Vietnam era and went in the military. But when I got back out, the first job I was offered was counting whales in Puget Sound. And this technique of photo identification had already been developed in this population by Dr. Mike Big in Canada. In the early 70s, he started at the north end of Vancouver Island, worked his way south. First group he ran into, he called A pod, and then B pod, C pod, and then down here in the south end, J pod, K pod, L pod. And each individual within the pod had a number one, two, three, four, so on, just sequentially, whoever he saw. There was a myth going around that uh, you can't tell them apart, for one, and, and people just didn't believe, you know, like, the first time I heard about Mike Big, it was uh, in a conversation about crazy people that could tell whales apart, you know, like, it's like fish in the ocean, how are you gonna tell this fish from that fish, you know? Uh, it was not generally accepted by the serious scientists. The U.S. government didn't believe at the time that the science was uh, that good, that you could tell whales apart, or the photography was that good. And uh, they hired me to see whether or not it was. The technique was uh, go out in a small boat, parallel the whales, and take side view pictures. This is a good one to do because uh, what we're gonna see is something interesting. The fin and the saddle pattern on them are the uh, identifying features. And the saddle is that gray pigment area just behind the fin on the back. Uh, it varies in shape. Uh, it's an area where scratches show up nicely and that's how we tell them apart. Back over to this one. This is 36 years later with virtually identical photographs of the saddle pattern. The system works. It's wonderful. It's very, very handy. Uh, I was just totally engrossed. And uh, yeah, I, I was up all the time, you know, middle of the night listening to hydrophones, first thing at daylight. We were based down in Seattle to start with, and I'd jump in the Boston Whaler and come up here. I did what I call a Circum San Juan. Drive out of Bainbridge Island, head up the Admiralty Inlet, come all the way around the San Juans, uh, ID whales that I'd find, go back that night, and you know, be 11 o'clock at night, end up back at Bainbridge, process film till about two in the morning. I began the study for the U.S. government under contract on April Fool's Day, 1976. By Halloween 1976, we'd identified everybody there and concurred completely with Mike Big that uh, we knew everybody, every whale in the population. We had 70 whales, all of them we could tell apart. They're the southern resident community in JK and L Pod. So if we could do that 
in one year and then do it the next year and see all the same individuals and do it the following year and then we'd see who's the new baby. We'd have a population of animals that we would know completely over a life cycle and answer questions that were biologically interesting. So uh, off we went and did it. About 1982 we went to our first IWC International Whaling Commission and by 87 it, the IWC was publishing the volume on individual recognition of cetacean. And it has become a technique worldwide for, you know, humpbacks, blue whales, right whales, fin whales, beak whales. This photo ID stuff works. That's, that's really beautiful. We have from every year, from 1976 on, we've digitized the pictures. And from 2004, we've been shooting digital images. And then we uh, produce an annual catalog of all the individuals. We do this for the naturalists and for the people that are serious about knowing what whale is here. So we can see the grandmothers, the mothers, and the uh, grand offspring of any given female. And we also see where the males fit in here, and they travel with the mother all the time. Anyway, as this study continues over the next, uh, oh, I hope 100 years, I won't be around for all of it, but uh, the pictures I hope will be. Uh, we'll have known paternities and maternities of everybody in the population. It's, it's, it's kind of fun being in science at this sort of stage where all these techniques are kind of amplifying each other. Each individual whale, like an individual person or an individual chimpanzee or elephant, whatever, uh, has kind of a behavioral stereotypic repertoire that's unique to that, that one. You know, they might be shy, they might be vivacious, jump and splash a lot, they might be, you know, little mama's boys or girls. You know, they have their little personalities or whale analogies, and uh, you get to know them. And, you know, that's the beauty of uh, I think animal studies in general is that, you know, they're not all just uh, amoebas or something, you know. They're, they got behavior. They got amazing behavior. And, and they're beautiful to look at and they uh, interact with each other and they have social structure. Uh, they have families, they have love, they have happy, they have unhappy, they have hungry, they have fine. If I could just uh, take a wand now and magically restore all the rivers to their former abundance of Chinook salmon, which are the food item for these, these whales, uh, that's what I would do. Salmon are on the top of the list. Uh, you know, you could get shot saying so, but uh, just stop harvest at this point. You will get the maximum recovery out of whatever's left if you stop taking them out and then or simultaneously, you know, take down some dams strategically that are blocking spawning habitat. Uh, don't permit activities like, uh, you know, a coal export dock and a herring spawning bed that is vital to the salmon's food. You know, our bureaucracies and our leaders are so reluctant to make decisions that uh, they miss opportunities to control carbon dioxide, to manage fisheries properly, to uh, you know regulate forestry practices or pollution. You know, there's all these pressures from user groups to do business as usual when clearly business as usual is destroying environments, species, and maybe ultimately the planet. Question. How long was it before you got realized how social these guys are and that they, like for example, you showed us the family trees and you said this group, they are, they're always together. 
Mm -hmm. How long, like, in, was it years before you realized, oh my gosh, these guys are really sticking together with their certain family groups, or did that happen pretty quickly, or what was the... Uh, we knew there was a social cohesion uh, in that first year. Mike Big had already figured out that the, uh, there is a cohesion in these groups that lasts over years, and we wondered if that would change as new members were born into the society and old members died out. One of the things that uh, Mike and I discussed early on was that it would be fascinating to follow a whale through its lifetime and actually get a good photograph of it every year, watch it grow up, how long did it live, how many babies did it have. Anyway, it was fascinating. I, we both agreed and that was 1976 and I'm still doing it.